Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Last fall, I showed you how I repaired my 80 meter off center fed dipole because the small rope didn't hold up very well in the trees with our frequent winds. There's a link to that video in the description. Well, it looks like I have to do a spring repair too, so let's get started. What I didn't show you last fall was that after I replaced the rope with steel cable, I decided to try a less expensive option for the other end of the antenna to see how it would hold up. Instead of replacing the polypropylene rope with the steel cable, on the other end I bought some polyethylene tubing at Home Depot and slid it over the rope, then I taped it in place on the rope where I thought it was getting rubbed by the most branches. It did hold up through the winter. I think it still might be holding up if I had made the tubing section about 10 feet longer. Then it would have covered the piece of rope that did finally break. Regardless, I've decided to go with the same proven steel cable on this end too. It's been holding up great on the far end and the center support for now. The first thing I need to do is drop the center of the antenna so I can get better access to the short end to attach the cable. It's always nice when your dogs help you out with your projects in the yard. As long as I have the center of the antenna down, it's a good idea to check the condition of the ballon and the wire connections. I'm using aluminum electric fence wire for the antenna elements and I used commercial splicing blocks that are specifically made to work with both aluminum and copper wire. It looks like the connections and the electrical tape are all holding up nicely. I'm going to cover the design and assembly techniques I used for this antenna in a separate upcoming video. Last year, when I put this antenna up, I promised my wife that she would hardly notice it in the tree. Then for some strange reason I decided to use bright green rope for my pulling line. So along with the steel cable I'm going to use some camo colored paracord for the last 10 or 20 feet coming down to the tie down hook on the trunk of the tree. I'm going to use the same technique as before and shoot a line up through the center of the tree so that I can tie the pulling rope off at the trunk. I'll repeat that same caution that I gave last fall, that a pneumatic launcher can be dangerous and you should not attempt this without the proper knowledge and training for these types of devices. You should also know that these types of launchers may be illegal in some jurisdictions. I don't know how I would get a line up through the center of the tree without some type of launcher. Even with the launcher, it sometimes takes a few attempts to get the line exactly where you want it. That one went where we wanted it to. The line came right over the top of the tree, right where that bird's pointing it out. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the bird to take it up there for me. I use a very light fishing line, so first I'll pull a nylon twine back up over to the center of the tree. Next, I'll pull the camo paracord back over to the outside. Finally, I'll pull the steel cable back up and over using the paracord. I had to go back and forth several times between the center and the end of the antenna to get the height, position, and tension properly adjusted. Now that it's back up, it's time to go inside and make sure it still works correctly. I'm going to use this Nano VNA, that's Vector Network Analyzer, to check out the antenna. For around $100, this is one of the best pieces of test gear that I've purchased. I know it's not laboratory grade, but for this type of work, it's perfect. You can find a bunch of video on these units if you're interested. I'll be using this with a companion piece of software called Nano VNA Saver. That will make it easier for me to capture the results. Let's look at the results of a sweep that covered everything from 80 meters up through 10 meters. 
What I really like about this antenna is that it has a pretty good SWR for almost all of the HF bands. It's based on dimensions from the Palomar Engineers website. I'll include a link to that in the description. This red line is at 3 to 1. That's the limit for the 7300 built-in tuner, so that's my benchmark for defining adequate performance. You can see that it's below 3 to 1 for the entire 80 meter band from 3.5 to 4 megahertz. In the middle of the band, it should work fine without a tuner. 60 meters doesn't look so good at over 7 to 1. An external tuner, something like the MFJ 939, should make it usable on 60, but it probably won't work that great. 40 meters looks great. It covers the entire band and shouldn't require a tuner anywhere in the band. 30 meters looks better than 60, but still not that great. Again, could be usable with an external tuner, but not going to perform that well. 20 meters looks okay, except it just creeps above that 3 to 1 threshold at the lowest end of the band. This part of the chart provides a pretty good indication that the Nano VNA is pretty accurate. I found that my 7300 tunes up fine for most of the 20 meters, but at the lower end of the band it struggles a little. Sometimes I have to try twice to get it to achieve a match. So that seems to say that what the plot here is showing and what is reality with the radio seem to be pretty close. Continuing on up, 17 meters seems to be the best band for this antenna. It's pretty much centered on a spot that looks very close to 1 to 1. 15 meters looks okay, kind of like 20, but the lowest part of the band is a little marginal, just about at that 3 to 1 point. 12 meters is not so great at over 4 to 1. Like 60 and 30, it's probably usable with an external tuner. Finally, it looks like all of 10 meters is covered with the antenna staying below 3 to 1 for the whole band. Getting pretty close at the bottom end, but should be very usable. Looks like I didn't damage anything during the repair, and any minor changes I might have made in the height or orientation when I restrung it didn't seem to hurt the tuning. Well, that's it for this time. Next time, we'll get back to some radio functions. One thing I forgot to mention during the segment, when you're working with wire antennas, it's always good to have an assistant who can help you manage the ropes and the strings. As I mentioned earlier in the segment, I will do a construction video for this antenna and go over some of the techniques I used and a little more detail on the dimensions from the Palomar website. In the meantime, as I stated, the link to the Palomar Engineers page that has those dimensions is in the description if you're interested in looking at it. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. I'm always happy to get comments with corrections, suggestions, or any other thoughts that you might have. Please check out the companion website for the channel at a2z.tech. You'll find a link for that in the description. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and for now, this is Ham Cured Smoke.